Hello, you're listening to Six Music. My name's Ross Howard. Hope you're very well. I'm here with my friend John. Hello. What are you two laughing about? What was going on there? Just having a good giggle about the fact that I've been put on a slightly different mic this week, which means at least three times in today's show, I probably won't get faded up and you'll just hear me mumbling in the background. Uh, there we go. Already. See, that's look. a joke already. Exactly. We barely even started. We haven't. We're thirty seconds in. We're already banging it out. Yeah. What a day. What a day. What a morning. I don't know if you've woke up. <laughs> I'm uh, full of it. He, re- he really is. He was, he was throwing it everywhere earlier. But um, we uh, we walked in, didn't we? We did walk in. Yeah. And we we the birds were singing at us, weren't they? Yeah. You should go if you're sat at home and you're in bed. Go outside. Go for a brisk walk. No, don't bother. No, Just what? open your curtains. Yeah. And then go for a brisk walk. It's don't nice out. I say go for a walk. Do those kinds. I read a story in the paper yesterday that it's going to be really sunny here today, but then there's going to be snow later on in the north. It's going to be a really weird day. It's going to be all types of weather all over the shop. Is that how I put it? Yeah. So you might be telling people to go out in a blizzard. So you just want to think about that, mate. Well, I'm not listening. You might just put people's lives at risk. <laughs> bringing bring everyone down there, John Richardson. You've just killed people, you know. <laughs> I haven't. I'm just saying. Just I'm in a good mood this morning. You are in a right mood. You uh, got in yesterday from Newcastle? Yeah. Travelled in? Yeah, that's a long drive, that. It, isn't it? Mm. Luckily, I had Phantom of the Opera on CD. I know that he, got me through. But you've got beef with your lady, haven't you? Go on. Jennifer Anderson, wasn't she in Phantom of the Opera? Uh, she was in the film version, well done. And you're going out with her, aren't you? Oh, the reason I know that she's uh, in the film version was because apparently there's a bit that you recorded on our Sky Plus <laughs> where she does a little dance and it made you go... Yeah. She doesn't do a little dance. She runs across some water and it's all splashing about. And it made you go... Yeah. Is that right? I, I, on a way, if I made that noise, it was unintentional. It was but a, I'm not saying I didn't. It was a wonderful noise to make. Well, um, what is going to be the, the usual kind of stuff today. We're just going to have a chat, have a ramble. Uh, text us in on 640... Oh, God, I haven't... I haven't oh, dear, yeah. 64046, or yeah. email russell.6music at bbc.co.uk. I've wow. remembered without it being there. It's like we've been doing this show for 16 weeks. It is. It's like somebody records how many shows we've done. Yeah. Is it show 16? I think it's 17, but I'm not really sure. I got a bit, I got a bit lost over Christmas, because we did three in a row, didn't we, really we did. quickly? We're and r- they were great. They rammed out. Sweet. Had Ross. a bad start to the morning, haven't you, mate? What do you mean? What well, happened this I'm morning? I had a right tricky morning. Um, you know when you wake up and you think, oh, it's going to be fine, and you, you get up and you make your friend John, who was looking really hairy this morning, as you still are. If, if anything, you're looking hairier. I haven't had a shave. No, it's incredible. You're looking right Sutcliffe-esque. Yeah, and I was in Newcastle. I didn't want people giving me any grief. Yeah, well, I wanted they, them to know not to mess well, with me. Well, they wouldn't with a beard like that. Mm. And I made you a lovely cup of tea, didn't I? Why I do they hate me? Yes. Um, you did make me a cup of tea. Yeah. Somehow, when you make tea... Go on. You've only just started putting the sugar in it. And I have. I'm very grateful for Thanks that. Thanks very much. Well, it's been a year, John, and you deserve it. But the sugar always stays in the bottom of the cup, so the top of the tea don't have any sugar in it, and then the bottom of the tea is too sweet. Well, it's not like you to be pernickety about that. <laughs> Anyways. Um, I'm grateful for the tea. That's all right. Um, yeah, and I rubbed your ear. You like that? I tell you what, you know when you find something fascinating about your mate, right? We were just outside before, and I went, are you up for this show? Get off me, don't touch me. Hey, not me special things. And I rubbed his ear, and his eyes just went, Bleh. So if you're ever... I believe what I did is grimace and pull away from oh, you. I know, you were halfway up the runway at least. So <laughs> if, if there really would be muggers and you're planning on attacking my good friend John Richardson, just tickle his ear and he'll give you all the cash. Thanks for that, mate. Public service announcement. I'd love to see you getting mugged. Because, Thanks. No, 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 because I know you'd fight back. I, I just, probably would. I know, there's know. every chance that you've got, like, nunchucks in your rucksack or something that you've just got... What would you do in a mugging situation? What would be your I plan? don't know, mate. I'd probably just see the mist and then I'm not liable for what happens. <laughs> well, wouldn't it be great just for you to totally, all these years, just draw it up and you just open a can? Yeah. Because doubt, you know, our, our friend James, I don't know what you've done in a, in a sort of a mug if you've ever fought back, but our friend James punched someone in the face. Did you know that? No. Yeah, in Bristol. Just smacked him and then legged it. How yeah. I think I'd lash out. I think you would. But then you, you get told not to, don't you? You get told just don't. Yeah. Who tells you not make to? make it worse. Who tells you not to? The man. The voices. Yeah. <laughs> Society. No, the police. So don't make it worse. You got Just the coppers coming around your joint. Yeah, well, we have meetings once a week. <laughs> I'm deemed a liability in society. <laughs> So they pot round. We have coffee now. My coffee table in my living room at my house. I hear John Barnes is doing adverts about you, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not if he knows what's good for him. So anyway, yes. get up this morning. Oh yeah, so I made John a cup of tea. It's going very well. And uh, we were sat watching a political programme, weren't we? We were watching a programme about happiness. Yeah. A little bit intense first thing in the morning on Sunday. Yeah, it was lovely. Um, it was either that or a programme about... It was kids' TV and we both... Oh, you know when you watch kids' TV in the morning, there was a, there was a particularly tubby man on mm. and he was kind of gurning at these kids and these, these two kids are about six who look so bored and he's going so what does your sister like does she like bogey wogey so you can just see the six-year-old going 
God, you're a dick, mate. God, was... you really got into that then. Yeah, yeah, For a moment, I saw you on kids' TV then. Well, I got offers when I was like 19 and then realised you can't do that. I did, I did an interview. You know when you do a weird job interview? And I had to, I had to ask kids what they thought about films for an mm. audition. Like, travel down from Bristol to London. You think, nope, not for me. Horrible, horrible. Anyways, the story's rambling on. But the thing is, I got John fed up nice. I put some trousers on him. I washed him down. <laughs> we were on our way out. This is, none of this is true. Things were going exceptionally well. I put a beret on top of him and he was singing. And we got halfway to the uh, the station. We didn't get I, halfway to the station, did we, mate? We were fully in the station, and um, I I had to pull out and said, oh, "Crimes in cribbins." I did say exactly that. That's what I said. I said, "I done left Mobo Wobo at home, and I." <laughs> That's exactly what I said because I've got a name for it. I call it Mobo Wobo, <laughs> and I said, "I've left Mobo Wobo at home," and I had to run back. <laughs> And it's really leaving fun. me to carry what I can only describe as a very turquoise travel bag yeah, on your behalf with a little turquoise gorilla attached to it. Uh, that would be Dave. Yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. Well, I got given that for free. Right. So, anyways, so, but run, you know when you're running really fast? Cause I, I know when I'm running fast. Because, yeah, because you've got the system in place. But it's horrible. This is how our relationship is. Because I could see the disappointment. Yeah, oh, bloody forgot your phone, have you? And then you walked off. <clears throat> so then I run away, kind of thinking, well, if I stop running for one second, there's every chance you'll be behind me. Don't you stop! So I ran all the way for fear that you were behind me and then turned around you weren't, got my mobile. But even worse than that, I've lost my laptop. Yeah. How old are you, Russell? 26 years old. How do you leave the house without doing keys, wallet, phone? I don't understand how anyone in today's society (laughs) leaves the house. I don't leave the toilet without checking where my keys, wallet and phone are. Yeah, but that's because you do very strange things in the toilet. I'm a busy man. I've got business to sort out. That's a fair point. But yeah. how how can you just walk out and not, not have thought... Oh. In, the, in the same way that I, like most people, I would, you know, hazard a guess, walk away from your car after you've locked it once. You don't do what he does. This is terrific, right? He locks the door. Then he checks the door that he's just locked. He checks the other door across, goes round the boot, touches it, then does a little dance, <coughs> touches his head twice, spins around, clicks his heel, goes uz, 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 and walks off. The worst thing about having to check the boot is my boot can't possibly open of its own accord. I have to go around and open it with the key and I still have to check that it hasn't just opened itself. I had to go out of the flat yesterday that I was staying in. I'd locked my car, I'd gone in, I'd settled down. I wasn't settled for some reason. I was having a coffee. I had to walk out in the middle of the football and check I'd locked my car. It was parked about five minutes away. I had to walk back to it. (sighs) It's a tough life. Right, more about the uh, John's new adventures in Swindon, uh, which is rapidly becoming the sitcom of the show. Uh, we'll, we'll trail you with the uh, the knowledge that John now gets his post at... Oh, pre-9am. Pre-9am. <laughs> I don't like the way I say Richardson. That's what we'll change Ri- it. Richardson, well, I say let's, in my let's give you a diff- rogue. Let's give you a different name. Text 64046, <laughs> what's your John's new name right, be? New surname. John Funk. Yeah? No. No? No. Uh, John Hush Puppy. No. John Le Measure. <laughs> Taken. Did you say, yeah, yeah, that's gone. Uh, what would you like it to be? John Wildebeest? I don't know. It's just something I can say that I'm not... I don't... I hate saying. John... Yeah. Howdy doody. <laughs> yeah. Be all right, I'll do it? Johnny Toodles. Johnny Toodle, howdy doody. Yeah. Johnny Toodle, howdy doody. Right. That's all right. Well, that's it from now on. What well, let's get in touch well, let's, with uh, well, let's the imagine, government. Let's imagine this is a register. All right. So, Smith, present... And then, I, I can't pronounce this. Does, does anyone know? How do you... It Johnny Tuttle is how to do it. There you go. Well, Lovely, I would have got bullied. Did you get bullied at school? Uh, no, no, no. Everyone gets a little bit of name calling and stuff, don't they? Well, and not. when you look like me, you expect a bit of grief. Oh, I'm fed up of this. Fed up of this. You're oh, I had big blonde curls when I was a child. They used to call me Goldilocks. Oh, see, that's lovely. Danny punched me in the stomach and called me Goldilocks. <sighs> Harsh. That, that is a beating, that. I was I was outside oh, of how uh, horrific is that? It was horrible. He punched me. He called me Goldilocks. The just other came day. out of nowhere. Hey, I think we're all, it was almost as bad as that time I was pushed off a wall. They called me Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> <laughs> I was just walking around. I was delivering a note from one class to another class, oh, which yeah. is the best thing that ever happens at school because you get to leave one lesson and interrupt another one, and it's all above board. And the way in which you, I would imagine, skipped down. I the was hall. I was moving around the school in a jaunty fashion. Oh, I can picture you now. The the curls billowing away. Mm. What did the note say? Did you doctor it? Oh, I never read the note, John. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. What's going on here? Is this what happens in the toilet? Yeah.
Uh, you never read the note. <laughs> no, you got to have respect for the system. Oh, flipping out. If I, I gave you a confidential BBC note and said, "Quick, run this down to Steve Wright at Sunday Love Songs," and if, you read it, well, if you gave me a note for Steve Wright, I'd have to read it for fear that you know it would be something abusive. I'd imagine it'd just be fine. Would How it? do Steve? Please play a dedication for society because I'm in love with it. Yeah, John Toodley. and everyone. <laughs> From John to Lee Woodley Woodley Woo. Um, and yeah. especially my postman. So go on, anyways. So uh, you were delivering a note. Yeah, and I was just skipping around the school, and I, I didn't even see him. He'd come out of nowhere from it, the side. He just winded me, and I fell on the floor, and he shouted Goldilocks and ran away. <sighs> but he's uh, he's not done so well since those days. Not as so. well as you. Uh, I believe now you live in Swindon, John. Tell us of the uh, the supermarkets you have. Oh, near I've you. had an amazing week. I've, it was I've incredible. S- is anyone here <laughs> listening to the show? Do you, do you have a mate who rings up bragging about how near he is to supermarkets? Because that's the friend I have in John. Tell us, mate. Well, I've been shopping at Asda all week, haven't I? I've spent a lot of money on homewares. £200 in one go and mm. 80 in another. Point me to a man buying a brand new lotion dispenser for his bathroom and I will show you a happy man. Although I did have a minor breakdown when the woman asked me if I was all right. And I suddenly thought, oh, what if I'm not? And I asked her, and she wasn't really ready to be asked. Oh, my God. John, why'd you do this? Right? I it just fell out. I, I assume <laughs> when people ask if you're all right, they actually care. And she oh, just she... went, everything all right? And I went, I've just moved from Bristol to Swindon. It'll be all right, won't it? It'll be all right. I haven't made a massive mistake. Oh, for God's sake. You should put all that up on that poor lady. Yeah. Like, do you know me? I just... Asking if you're right in that, my love. Yeah. Well, no, actually, she said, I don't know. I don't live here. So, Ooh. thanks very much. Slam. I think you'll be fine. You're oh, doing I'm well. loving it. Absolutely loving it. What's the best thing you bought from Asda this week? Uh, oh, now you're asking me. Now you're asking me. I bought a curtain pole, unless <sighs> my landlord's listening, in which case I didn't put up a new curtain pole this week and hammer holes into the wall. <laughs> Dangerous. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what, mate. We've had a, an email in from Kirsty Granger um, who says, No! Just can't believe it. I lived in sunny Swindonia for four years and have never once got my mail before nine o'clock. It's plain irresponsible broadcasting. It's great. Kirsty Brackett's great show. Lovely. It happens. It happens, Kirsty. <laughs> Let's have a meeting together. I'll meet you at the Massive Borders. Oh? Yeah, we'll meet in Starbucks. We'll have a coffee. Nice. And, and you then got we'll to... go down and buy a few more cookbooks. You can, uh, or you Some can... smashing cookbooks this week. Oh, flipping hell, mate. <laughs> um, what do you do? Well, I do what, everything. What do you do? Do you just sit at home? I've got an image of you just sat at home in your kitchen going, nah, got me cookbooks, got me... Let's have a chat with me toaster, shall I? <laughs> what do you do? Do you listen to radio late at night? Uh, well, I did yesterday on do the you? drive down from Newcastle. I heard some stunning late night radio. Yeah, it's always I good, heard isn't it? The, uh, uh, I tell you what I don't like, that Irish bloke on Five Live. Well, I was listening to him and he had that woman in about... Oh. Uh, you told me you hadn't heard this story about the teacher who shot an air rifle at a kid's outside her house. <laughs> Right. She she didn't shoot it at them, right? Yeah. She shot it at the floor. To She, she was going on about how she had all this stuff kept happening to me. They, they were just giving me grief all the time. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. I just Everyone's got a break in pint. Absolutely. So to quote Adam Deneen, she popped a cap. She popped a cap into the floor, though, an air cap into yeah. the floor, right? But there was, <laughs> he was asking her, the Irish, I can't remember his name, Stephen. Don't he know. said, uh, so cross, so what were these kids doing? What were they doing? And she said, well, my son would go out, and every time he left the house, they kept shouting, you're going to get bombed. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get bombed. And Stephen was really behind her. He really loves all this vigilanteism. Yeah, yeah, and he went, absolutely. Well, did your husband not go out there? What did your husband do? And she went, Yeah, he went out there too. And he went, When well, what happened? They said he were gonna get bombed <laughs> <No. laughs> and And I she... couldn't take it seriously after that. Was she just doing it really deadpan as well? She was, and then at one point she <laughs> cracked a joke because uh, she said, well, I will put in prison for firing this air rifle. I will put in a prison, I'm not joking you, Stephen, with ten walls with barbed wire at the top. Do I look like I could even climb one wall? And he went, no, and she went, don't be cheeky. Oh, really? Yeah, it was quite funny. So I, couldn't, I didn't know if she was joking the whole time or whether she was actually quite serious, but I imagine she was big. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to picture people on the radio, isn't it? It's Are important. You- yeah, but then you never know. Talking of big people, I saw a fantastic old, um, old quite fat lady on the uh, on the tube the other day, and she was eating a Mars bar. It reminded me a bit of you actually, um, because she just put the Mars bar. You can put a similar bit of chocolate into your mouth, I imagine. But she was popping it into her mouth, and she just closed her eyes and just went off into this kind of. Uh, uh, it was just great. She just sort of sat there. And you couldn't not look at her. She looked so happy. Just sat there. 
Mm, 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 eating the chocolate, it was great. No, I wasn't really. I wasn't really in the mood for anything last night when I was driving. I thought I'd stop over and get nice stuff that I fancy. It was just nothing I fancied. I ended up frittering money away on food that is still in my uh, glove box. Hey, mate, you've got a disposable income. You've got a cheap rent. It's fine. So, a couple got... of texts in. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, hit John, me. Hit I'm, me. Hit I'm me. called Ben Richardson, and I also hate saying my surname too, and I'm not Northern. My mates call me Rico, which sounds Brazilian. Hey, Rico was the name of your Pro Evolution <laughs> soccer player. Yeah, he was a good player. Oh, and he was attractive, wasn't he? Yeah, and he I did... wish I looked like him. What we did, we, we put ourselves into, as I'm sure you've done it at home, you know when you put your mates onto, into uh, computer games and you can give them different goal celebrations, mm. but bizarrely we picked them all <laughs> randomly and John's one, all the others, you jump in, you take shirts off, you dance at each other, you do weird little moves. John's one would just run into the corner on his own, lift his hands up to the heavens and start going, yeah! yeah. With amazing. no one else around yeah. but we've also had a text saying john you are not alone i am constantly checking my boot and doors even though i'm sure that they are locked and that's from james well to be honest that's more kind of am i normal isn't it yes right? people saw you at the hyena calf on friday it said you're very good Thanks. um and also somebody got very cross saying that you shouldn't be shopping at asda you you're more of a sainsbury's man apparently well i'm a morrison's man i love morrison's yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll i'll make no bones about it if there's a morrison's i'm there and I was delighted to find one just round the corner from my house. I could cycle there. On a sunny day, I'll get a bike, I'll put my backpack on, I'll go around and get a few a few bits. But uh, for a big shop, I'll drive round. Obviously. <laughs> I'll want the boot. You're and I'll want it to be open then. You're listening to six music, kids. <laughs> um. uh, I'm aware of, you know, how I sound. It's all right, it's lovely. Dull. Hey, come on. Am I normal? Let's do it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, whenever. Do you want to do yours? Have you got well, one? text us on 64046 or email russell.6music at bbc.co.uk with yours. Nearly got that right. Um, basically, it's just like the quirky habits. I, I'll be honest, I think I'm out. Right. I've, I've, I've done all of them. I think I've got to the stage where now where I know I'm pretty much normal. Well, this is a dark day for am I normal. Yeah, yeah, well, we, we thought it would run and run and run, but I'm, I think I'm pretty much cured. I don't think there's anything I do, other than things I've, I've spoken about, or the ones I'm not willing to tell the nation. Right. No, because that's the thing. So am I going to have to start writing yours for you? No, no, no yeah, because <laughs> then it'll just be, I get up and I put cocoa foots in my ears or something, and I don't do anything like I didn't that. know you did that. No. What, the only thing I, I have noticed... my wax all chocolatey. <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. But I've, no, I've, no, <laughs> I've noticed that I start talking to myself a lot. Mm. That's, the, uh, that's the only thing. You know when you kind of... But specifically about tasks to achieve in the day, which doesn't really go with what people would assume of me. So no. As the two-dimensional caricature that you've created of me. Yeah. Don't uh, forget to forget your phone. No, exactly. Thank you, Russell. I won't. Well, you will. No, I won't. Will I? I don't know. Who are you? No. <laughs> yeah, that would be quite nice. Um, but um, I, I realised this when I was in uh, Lincoln University the other day, and uh, I was in my hotel room, and I made myself a den... Uh, yeah, which is as a dirty den. Uh, it, it was a lonely moment. Uh, yeah, it was just horrible. And you sort of sat in there, and I was watching Simon Sharma on me uh, on me laptop. I haven't got that anymore. And um, but I was just kind of, I just kept repeating. Right, I'll do the gig, then I'll finish at ten, and then I'll get back, and then probably get home at about one. That'd be good. That'd be good. And just realised that I was talking out loud to myself. Do you do that? That's the safety of a den, though. You can do what you like in a den. Oh, sad. This is why we build dens. I built a den, though. 26. Mm. So was it a good den? It was, it was all right, but it was... Because I didn't realise I was doing it. I didn't think I'll make a den <laughs> for myself. I, yeah. I'm I just asleep. turned around and I'd built all the cushions yeah, into a castle shape. Uh, yeah, what happened? I came to and I'd noticed I'd made a fort. Um, but I just... Because the, the sun was glinting through and it was stopping me from learning about the Plantagenets and... Um, so I put a towel over my four poster bed uh, like on one side and then another towel on the other side. And then I sort of put the cushions all in, sort of, they were sort of shoved up and then lifted the, uh, the duvet so I totally covered myself and realised that I was in a den. Oh, that's just... not really a den. Well, I didn't know. You were the connoisseur on dens. So yeah, what... I pretty much am, yeah. What, what makes... I'm the den zen. What makes a den zen? Um... You have to have complete closure on a den. There can only be one aperture in a den. Sweet crap. So I've got an image again now of you as a kid. No, no, Lee, that's wrong. No, no, bring it all down. <laughs> <laughs> Just wearing a hard hat. I yeah. bet you planned it, didn't you? My, have you done my any structural de work? My den making was a very kind of haphazard thing. Right, we'll put it there, put it there. Yeah, oh, let's put, oh, let's go, let's just have some tea now. I've got an image of you strutting around. Right, den building. First of all, oh, very low bearing. Very low, this is going to be interesting, Lee. Worth oh. putting some effort into a den. No, it's not. You do it for five minutes, then you go downstairs, you drink fizzy. Oh, no. 
Well, a den. Uh, the difference between a den and a base, though, is very different, isn't it? Did you have a base when you were a kid? Base camp? No. Yeah. No, I used to go outside and ride my bike. We had a cracking base just off the cycle track. We? In Lancaster. Oh, oh, oh no. Well, that's very different. Yeah, you're referring to the Ropley lads. Oh, what a merry gang we were. Uh, we used to go round the back of the uh, pavilion. Right. And there was a gamekeeper called Bert Gamfield, right? And what we used to do is smash up his flowers and that. Yeah. So we were lads. Lovely. And our leader, Tom Stroud, smoked a cigarette once when he was ten. And uh, our other mate, Simon, used to ask us very intrusive questions about the shape of our mother's pubes. Right. But do continue with your base camp. No, no, I think we'll move back on to uh, Am I Normal. Oh, really? It's all got a cracking den we had. A little pipe that ran down. We used to wee in the top of it. It used to go down the bottom onto the cycle track. Uh, oh, really? You know, don't do it on your own doorstep, do you? And we found a broken Game Boy, so we set that up in the office. <laughs> Great. Go on, then, what's the Am I Normals? Well, we've had one in that says, John was just going on about how he couldn't comprehend how Russell can leave the house without the mandatory 30-something safety check of Key's wallet phone. I agree wholeheartedly. Really? I think everyone does Key's wallet phone now. No, no, and no, Dave no. suggests it's an evolution of the gear fags Rizzler mantra that I uh, recited many times when leaving places in my early 20s. I disagree. Keep texting them in, 64046. Email russell.6music at bbc.co.uk with the quirky little habits you feel compelled to do. John, what's My your... one this week relates to socks. I will not put on. I will not put on. <laughs> Go on. If you put on a pair of socks, even if you've only worn them for 10 minutes yep. and you take them off, you yep. can't put them back on again. Absolute they're soiled. Nonsense. Absolute. No, they're not. You can, what you can do, you can take them socks off, pop them on your hands, do a puppet show for a lover or friend, pop them back on and strut away. No, always clean socks, especially for a puppet show. No. That's unhygienic. You can't put dirty socks on your hands. What, as if you're going to get heckled? This is Mr. Sweat and Bacteria. He's come to say hello. It wouldn't be Can that. you smell him? No, clean socks all the time. And once socks are off, that's it. They go in the wash pile or they go in the bin. New socks when you put them on. Nah, false. You can only put fresh socks on. Great no. feeling sliding on a pesh. A pesh of a pesh of fresh socks. The Nashish feeling is, um, as I said a few weeks ago, you know, you know, when you see your pants on the floor in the morning, pick them up, pop them on the radiator, and then you put them on. God, that's good, isn't it? Just feel like it feels like you're getting cuddled. I like cold pants. Really? <laughs> They're fresh. Warm pants imply you could warm pants by getting someone else to put them on. Yeah, that'd be lovely. I'd oh. Love oh if, I'd, if I had a man who... Morning, sir! Oh, cheers, if Gregory. If I had a man. Cheers, Gregory. Have, have you, can you uh, wear them pants in for me? Yes, sir! I'd <laughs> love that. A little Dobby figure to wander around wearing my pants in. Sir, they There's appear to of... already have skidders. Oh, John. Oh, you, you... put them there yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> Early bird catches the skids. We we don't know if it's sunny anymore. We can't really... Oh, maybe we can see a little bit of the sun. But I, I like the idea that people are skipping bountifully around this land. Mm. Thus not listening to our show. Well, they'll catch it on Listen Again, mm. which we're doing very well on, John. Yeah. Did you know? How cool is this? We're, uh, thanks very much for listening again. Um, to this is the people not on the Sunday, see so the people in the future. Hello, yeah. future people. Um, what, been... God, what if it's all gone wrong? Yeah, isn't it weird? What, the dinosaurs? Who saw that coming? Well, we did. Um, that's why we got dinosaur masks beforehand, because we knew if they turned up... <laughs> Hello. That's why we're fine. We're in league. Anyways, um, but <laughs> the, uh, the top three downloads on Six Music, Bob Dylan, Stephen Merchant, and us. Yeah. Our little old show, John. How cool is that? Yeah. We, we like the idea that Dylan's very excited about that, don't we? Yeah, well, we had a meeting and got told that. So somewhere in America, I reckon Bob Dylan had a meeting and got told, yeah, you're doing very well, Bob. Uh, you're right up there with the Russell Howard show. All right. I always knew I'd do very well. I like that John Richardson. He's creepy. <laughs> am I normal? What up Bob Dylan's am I normal would be? Yeah, I talk a lot about crime. <laughs> I like to rhyme about people doing the time. Lovely. Yeah, thanks very much. He does Morgan Freeman impressions as well. That's My cool. album's out at the end of the month. Is it? What's it called? Do John not buy this. John Richardson gives you the blues. Really? Yeah. Moody songs. My moody guy. <laughs> a two, three, four, <laughs> well. The other day my post arrived at 11. <laughs> when driving, this is uh, an hour normal from James. When, I, when driving, I must have my window open no matter what the weather. Otherwise, my driving skill suffers greatly. Am I normal? Mm. Yeah, I see. I quite like the idea that you need some fresh wa uh, water. You need <laughs> some fresh air from time to time. That's always quite nice, but not all the time. Mm. No, I don't like that one. <laughs> yeah, well, John oh, I like it as an am I normal, but I, c I can't be doing it with my window open. Okay. What if it was raining? You get all wet. Yeah, but that's quite nice in some respects, because then when it isn't raining, you're a lot happier. Yeah, I suppose that's true. So in that sense, it's probably worth just carrying a cup of water around with you, yeah. and at you know, random yeah. points during the day, just tipping it on yeah. your head. Yeah, just And then you'll it. be glad when you've not got a tipped... 
glass of water over your head. Yes, yes. Mm. yes. Mm. What have mm. you got, love? Uh, well, Henning Strack is back. Oh, Henning Strack? What yeah. a fantastic... Has he texted him before? Yeah, Henning Strack's our number one fan in Germany. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, Henning, yeah. how you doing? And that's a coveted title as well. Absolutely. There are sometimes up to four people going for that title. Yeah. Guten Tag, Guten Abend, and all that, Henning. Yeah. He says... Uh, when Gehst du gar die Kino? Hast du Englisch fester? Wo wohnst du? He's well happy now. Yeah. Hit me, John. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what happened there, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, Henning, right, when he eats from a box of chocolates, he has to eat them in an order that leaves some sort of symmetrical figure left in the box. Well, Sometimes he says, I might go for the corners first. Sometimes I do a straight line through the middle, a la catchphrase. He's not really doing the uh, stereotype of, of German people much there, is he? <laughs> go on. But you are. No. Uh, but there always has to be a pleasant pattern left. Am I normal? I think you are, but the problem with that one is you can cheat. So if you really want a chocolate, yeah. just eat it and put another one in its place. What? Well, you can always... It's not like you have to... He's implying that you have to eat, like, a chocolate you don't really want. Oh, in order to... To, to fill with the pattern. But then if you eat a chocolate that's, you know, but ruined surely, the pattern, just if, slide another one over. But if you're that freaky about things, you're going to notice it, aren't you? Let's be honest, if you did that, if you went, right, I'll have that, I'll have that Cadbury cream. Oh, no, I can't put my shuffle there. Oh, no, I'll move that. No, oh, never mind it. I'll just throw them all away. I get really irritated by people who take chocolates really seriously. You know when you've got a box of chocolates and you offer someone one? Yeah. And they won't take it unless they can look at that leaflet for 20 minutes. And if there isn't a leaflet attached, they won't eat your chocolate. Yeah, ridiculous. I'm not taking a chocolate at random. I'll be honest, I like to put five in my mouth at one time. I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I'm eating crisps, this fits in from Paul, <laughs> uh, or it's just some other savoury snack from a bag, maybe I a like pork scratchy. I wait by snack. <laughs> uh, I have to lick my fingers in between handfuls. This is despite the fact I know I'm going to put my hand back in the bag and sully my fingers once more the very next minute. And he's got eczema. Uh, <laughs> uh, hello, oh, Russell. Nice. My friends say I'm not normal, moving swiftly on. For years I've eaten in multiples of three. Three bites, three crisps, six sips, or perhaps nine bits of cereal on my spoon. I do sit and count, but never eight. Oh, Jesus, that's... That's a I bit... do that with Cheerios. Do you really? You've got to have one of each Cheerio, but that's because of the advert. Oh, it's like when you're eating a God, mother. whoa, for a second. Do you... Jesus, how long does it take you to eat them? I Just... don't really eat breakfast. It's but... just too much of an ordeal. For, for... I haven't got time in the morning. For I've got that a post very to read. You just sat there going, oh, here we go, bloody breakfast again. Snap, crackle, pop, in you go. Snap, crackle, pop. Why am I doing this? The worst one is if I'm having Marmite on toast, which is what I very often have, you know, a bit of, uh, a bit of wholemeal toast for some slow-release carbs and some Marmite. Well, right? you're up early, John. You're reading your mail. If I tear the bread, I have to start again. I hate oh, torn toast. Sweet Jesus. Um... What, but with I, say, I say, stop for a second, I say we knacker this off, am I normal, and we change this section of the show to, we get a therapist in and we make you better. Right, because well since we haven't bothered to write them anymore, Russell, I'd suggest this, this bit may be on its way out anyway, when I turn to you and say, what's yours, and you go, I don't know, I'm, I, just, I'm normal now. I'm just worried, yeah, but... It, I'd be... pick wax out of my ears with teaspoon handles on trains, but apart from that, I'm totally normal. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, that's fine. Mm. That takes me two minutes, it's done, wax is out, mm. and you're there, counting... The cereal you put into your mouth. Yeah, it's just that's the nicer way of doing it. No, like, like a molar fruit corner, you've got to go in the yogurt and then somehow get a little dollop of the syrup right in the middle of the spoon. You it's a real challenge. Somehow. Mmm. God. These things don't happen by accident. No, they don't. They happen by ruthlessly planning them, yeah. which you shouldn't do when you're eating a yogurt. Well, you're coming around for dinner next week, and I've been stressed about it for two weeks now. Yeah, yeah. What am I going to cook? He's been ringing me up. Right, it was fantastic. He went, all right, Ross. All right, all right, John, how are you? Oh, oh. Dinner party soon. I was like, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Sarah's coming around. She's a bloody vegetarian. Oh, she'll be the death of me. <laughs> I, bought, I bought something yesterday for the dinner party. Pretty what? exciting. Well, I'll tell you what. Is it a bucking bronco? Oh, no. It's, it's food related, man. I won't be. We're not having games. What? Bokaroo? Yeah, let's do that. No chance. Yeah, come We'll talk about politics and we'll listen to chill out music. I've tried doing that before. I tried playing some sort of deep and meaningful music when I cooked you that food that time, remember? No. Yeah, you do. What did you ever cook me? Is it a jacket potato? You can't cook a jacket potato. You get me a potato now and I'll cook it. Right, well, good luck because there's no microwave. Well, it's because you or can't... Or oven. Yeah, I wouldn't use that. What would you use? The sun. Thank you, everybody. Um, <laughs> it's now time for that. No, you to to a jack of potato. You can put it in the microwave or the oven. Yeah, I don't know how to do. It. I made you one with like beans and that flowing over it. I don't remember that. I played some Pavarotti. What was in it? Because I don't remember eating it. Oh, it's sort of 
Do you, I'm okay. guessing I blacked out shortly afterwards. Yeah, exactly. I had red ears when I woke up. Yeah. Do you know, I spoke to my mum yesterday Wait, and she you said, you're, you're not really good at those session track things. <laughs> she does well, speak like that, bizarrely. It's we really... went for a lovely dinner in Durham. What, what a lovely city Durham is. Oh, it's fantastic, isn't Unbelievable. it? Unbelievable. What a lovely lady your mum is as well. Mm, I'll echo that. Yeah. Well she's... done, mums. She said something beautiful to me, I remember, after I did a gig in Bristol. Just uh, wash them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, make yourself laugh there. Well, the thing that's beautiful about that is not only was that really <laughs> funny, but we can both see your mum saying mm. that, and she would never say that. She's one of the <laughs> kindest people I've ever met. Just wash them. <laughs> Honestly. It's just, oh, that's very funny. Oh, but no, she said something really lovely to me, and it's um, like, you know, you, when you always go on about that thing of people like saying something so kind it breaks you. Oh, it was a wonderful thing. What well, th- your mum should be sort of. Government issued all mums really all the nice mums so that you can like you know like that that paper clip that arrives on um, the, Sort of you know when you're trying to do a letter mm. if you're a little bit confused like a mum should arrive and go Oh, I see you're in trouble. Here you go. Do this you're like your mum. Just wash them for God's sake Just put talcum there mm. not that she did that. She said something really kind anyways This is all uh, this is all uh, banter about John what did Bro- she say? She hates she? Th- no, 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 she <gasps> doesn't hate me what? She doesn't she hates me. What about that breakfast she cooked me that time more bacon on my plate than yours? That's when your uh, your fat dog was still with us. Oh, God, you're not allowed. He wasn't fat. He was we were discussing fat, this as well. How you dog. constantly make my dog out to be fat. We had very steep stairs. Uh, rah, rah, rah. It was very difficult for him to get yeah, down. Because he was so fat. Oh. He was lovely, but he's the fattest dog I've ever seen. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, let's just hey. smoothly go into this. Yeah, exactly. From John's tubby dog to uh, it's comic you relief. You dare talk about my mother like that. <laughs> you- it's uh, it's comic relief. Did you know that, John? I know that, mate. It's all over the telly. Yeah, Lenny Henry's delighted. It's the only time he gets to go on telly, um, <laughs> and he just ruins it, doesn't he? Every oh, that's probably going to come back to haunt us. Yeah, <laughs> I'm you say us. Yeah, you're on your own there, mate. I right. love his work. Yeah, you do. That's a fair point. He was watching DVDs of Chef the other day. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Anyways. Um, what you can do is you can text the word mobile because I think they're doing all sorts of stuff on Six Music. They're doing like a, this um, Drop the Dead Junkie, which is like a sitcom or something or other, um, and various other things. But I think people are. A sitcom or something, or the sitcom written by Six <coughs> Music's John Holmes and Andrew Collins, no oh, less. Oh, he's, he's a lovely bloke. We don't really know John very well, but he seems like a nice fella. Yeah. Very small, but that's fine. Um, Bill Bailey's going to be popping in, doing some live stuff in the hub. Uh, all kinds of stuff you can text in. Mark Riley's doing some tracks that you'd never normally hear on the radio. Should be fun. A bit and like 100% Belters, if you ask me. A bit, yeah, John's off. a bit upset, yeah. yeah. Um, but we're doing our bit as well. You can also, you can text the word mobile to 64046. Follow the link to the Six Music website, and you can be the proud owner of some very, it'd be quite funny to have just some breasts on the WAP side, wouldn't it? Just so that'd be quite funny. Just go all that way and it just. Anyways, what you can do is you can get some audio downloads for your mobile phone, which we had no idea, but they've been lifted from our show and they sound a bit like this. So you can get these on your phone. People need to die. That's an impression of me uh, talking about John, or here's another one of me talking about John. Is anyone happy though? So which one would you rather have? You can have either one of those. There's uh, there's about six of them in, in total. Yeah. But to find out more about Red Nose Day on Six Music, you can go online to www.bbc.co.uk forward slash Six Music. What are you doing for comic relief, John? Uh, bath and beans, bath and beans. No, I, I don't think I'm doing anything. <sighs> you heard it here first. So, John, not doing anything for comic relief. I will do some. I'll give some money. Do you know what I mean? I'll do my bit. How much? A million pounds. What's the much you're given? Oh, I don't know. I have direct debits out of my account every yeah, month. Same here. What for? Let's do this. Oh. Animals, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking natural animals. disasters, the homeless, you name it, I'm fixing it. Donkeys? No. Got no time for a donkey. I <laughs> I just think there are bigger problems in the world. Yeah, but I do donkeys. I do. That's uh, what I've heard. Oh, yeah, <laughs> to be honest, I've walked into that. Yeah, yeah you do that. And all. Um, where was a rumor? It's amazing how rumors start at school. There's a friend of mine called Tom uh, who had a. Uh, I think that was a fact, not a rumor. Yeah, he had a donkey called Stella, and there was a rumor that he used to go in the back of his garden, right, and play golf, and he'd once hit a ball that had gone right off his donkey's. <laughs> Place, a special place. All right. And it's just such a ridiculous childish, but that, that became almost fact. It's like, oh, that'll be Tom going home to shoot golf balls off his donkey. <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're doing Am I Normal, aren't we? We Russian are doing Am I Normal, yeah. We've Russian got, Dave. We've got a lot. Oh, Russian Dave, who yeah. I've heard before. Yeah, he won't drink a cup of tea unless the milk goes in first. Is that right? Mm. Mm, intriguing. We've got one here from Abby, three kisses. So uh, you can take one of them if you want, Adam. 
Um, well, we, well, uh, we had a quick one in uh, about uh, someone said the guy sitting next to me has immensely tight jeans on. Yeah. Are his chaps still alive? Yeah. Adam, Don't Adam you, Deneen, Adam. who's our assistant producer, he really doesn't fool around when his jeans are. They're properly tight, aren't they? Mm. He doesn't fool around. It's yes. like they're spray on, they're fantastic. Whereas Adam, our main producer, has very flowing normally, although they're quite tight today, aren't they? <laughs> but then oh, they would have to be. Um, uh, uh, this, is, <laughs> this is from Abby. Uh, I walked in yesterday to find my housemate drying his boxers, which has just been washed in the microwave. Is he normal? Washed in the microwave? Yeah. I, I think- heard you could do that with sponges. Really? Yeah, you can put sponges in the microwave for two minutes, it kills 98% of the bacteria. Oh, it, but wait, don't set your house on fire. Well, I was saying, what, like, with any water on, or just... Um... Or is it like that bit in the green mall? I, you know, maybe you do have to dampen it a bit. I'd have thought you would. Mm. And it c- kills 95%? 98% of the bacteria so in the So two are left? Yeah. Yeah. Which ones? Just get new ones. Uh, Barry and Steve. Barry and Steve, good guys. Yeah, dangerous, um, though. Right, what are the other Am I Normals, John? Uh, We've got one from Carol again. Uh, I cut everything into, oh, everything with no E-V-R-Y. You right there? Um, What's that? Just a spelling mistake. I cut everything in two, in two. The number two? Yeah. Similar sizes and have two, have equal amounts left of my favourite bits. Am I normal? Sunday dinners are a nightmare. Mm, no, that's good, that one. Yeah, it is. It's We've nice, had it. it. I like the one. Occasionally, I like the ones. The idea of this feature is supposed I like to be the that. girls that do. <laughs> that they're, they're things that everyone secretly does. So when yeah. you read it, everyone goes, God, I do that. Yeah, but yeah. some come in that are really mental. And they're the good ones. Liam says, Dear Russell and John. Hi, Liam. Whenever I put a letter in a post box, I have to slide up and down the little metal plate on the post box that tells you the day the post was last collected. Yeah. I have to do this after each letter I put in the box. I get the feeling I look very odd, (laughs) especially when I have more than one letter to post. If I forget to slide the plate after posting a letter, I have to post another letter within an hour and slide the plate up and down twice. Am I normal? No. No. No, And that's coming from me. So hang on, yeah. So what, he has to send, like, another letter? Just a random letter to anyone? Yeah. Oh, did you used to fantasise about the idea of like hiding in a letterbox so that you could you could scare people? No. Okay. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Ridiculous. You do that. When on a train or bus, I have to sit in the direction that I'm travelling to the point where I will make people move and swap seats with me from Bex. Oh, Bex sounds like a turd. You can't <laughs> do that. That's not fair. What's Telling it like it is, some, Russell Howard. Yeah, some frail old lady. I'd very much like to sit here. Move out of the way. Yeah. That's horrible. I prefer the opposite. I prefer to sit with my back to travel. Because when you sit facing forward, you're constantly looking for stuff on the horizon and yeah. it goes past really quickly and you're always disappointed because you think, ah, oh, be boring hills again in a minute and I wanted to look at that tower and now it's gone. Whereas if you sit facing backwards, you're not really expecting anything. So anything you get to see out of the window is always a bonus. Plus, you quite like a struggle, John, don't you? You quite like the idea that you're, uh, yeah, I, I, I haven't got the right view here, but don't worry. It's easier to stare at people when you sit facing backwards as well. Yes, which is always fun. Mm. Uh, whenever I'm in a shop that sells cuddly toys, says Sarah, if I, I, see, I touch one I, of I them... I see John Richardson adding to his <laughs> stash. <laughs> oh, I've got a bin bag for... There's something horrible. Uh, you collect your teddy bear. You can't throw a teddy bear away, can you? You cannot throw a teddy bear away. But I am happy I've put them all in a bin bag and put them in my garage, oh, which feels oh. a little bit like murder. I tell you what, I can't wait to... <laughs> To, I'm going to steal them and drown them in a river. I poked an air hole in the bin bag so oh. they could breathe in the garage. <laughs> Why are they in the garage? I don't, well, I don't want them in the house, mate. I'm having dinner parties. That's I've f- gone into high society. How in great Sweden. is that? Flipping out. If anything bad happens to you, thank God you've told us about that. That would have been the most terrifying. Just what's in this? <gasps> just this ocean of. How many toys you got in there? A bin bag full. Oh, I like the idea that when you shut the garage, they're having a right party in there. Mm. Imagine that. I wouldn't hear it. The garage detached. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's doing very well. Come on. I'm living the dream. Uh, w- yeah, whenever I'm in a shop that sells cuddly toys, if I touch one of them on a shelf, I have to pat the rest of them on the head as well so that the other ones don't feel oh, that. That's properly freaky. Imagine that if I'm working at the bear factory or the bear shop, whatever it's called, and some weirdo comes in and starts rubbing up all my bears. This is my favourite one of the day, the a quick goonies. one from Tony. Okay. Just says, I laugh like a horse. Sweet. That's it. <laughs> We're uh, we're throwing out invites to the uh, the dinner party willy nilly here, aren't yeah. we, John? Yeah, he's not coming. So Adam Not Hudson, our producer, can't do it because uh, he's going to Austria. He gets mm. about, doesn't he? Yeah, and you know, travels as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Adam Denis, down the slopes. Here we go. Are you in? I'm in. 
Yeah! yeah. Fantastic. Well, I don't and know whether that... to tell you what I bought yesterday. I bought a very exciting thing yesterday for the dinner party. Well, I'm excited about it. I'll tell you what we should do. Text in 64046 or email russell.6music at bbc.co.uk. Hey, I'll tell you what, let's make this a focal part of the show. We could we could have like a starter, a main, mm. and uh, a pudding. All right. Bear in mind, right, I'm in London next Friday night, then I'm flying to Glasgow the next day, then yeah. I'm coming here to do the show. Hey, we're all working I'm hard, busy, mate. so don't go texting in, like, anything too complicated. I suggested doing a lasagna, because I thought... Oh, yeah, he did. He rings me up. He's like, hey, we're having lasagna. And I reacted badly. Yeah, you swore at me. Yeah. You said, oh, you was looking forward to something I've never had before. I did say that, yeah. Honestly. And if you do something he's never had before, he just wants to put baked beans on the side of it. It's <laughs> yeah. pointless. But yeah. anyway, so, yeah, I text in some uh, suggestions for menus, but not too much. Cause I've either got to prep it on the Friday and leave it in the fridge, but I've, I've sorted out the starter. I bought a, uh, oh, I, I bought well, I'll a tell you what, wait, wait, wait. Oh. You, you say the starter, and you, you were doing a Randy Newman impression then. Yeah. Uh, text in the starter, or then you tell us the starter. Well. And then, and then what we'll do is we'll see if the uh, the nation agree with you whether or not it's good enough for the dinner party guest, which includes the wonderful Adam Deneen now. What in, you in the words of Randy Newman, you gotta fondue set. You... I bought a fondue set yesterday. Oh, flip it I out. looked all around Durham for one, right? Yeah, you should have gone... Then... You should have gone to Swindon. I There's a new thing there. I went into a cookware <laughs> shop and I said to the woman, have you got a fondue set? And she went, yeah. And I went, thank God, I've been looking since the 1980s. That was a lovely opener. We had a good giggle about that. Yeah. And then she showed me all the fondue sets and she said, uh, this one's our age for fondue and that. This one's very good for chocolate. She was, I said, Je it's all she right. was Jeff from Biker Grove. Yeah. Nice. You know, he's got to do something. Uh, get off the top of that hill. She said, uh, this one a loaf of chocolate as well. I said, it's all right, I've got a chocolate fountain. But the doctor's given me some pills for it. Did you, did you? And we had a right giggle. Oh, lovely stuff. You've which is quite it. a brave opener for, yeah. uh, for a woman in a fondue shop. It's great when you have those moments. Al Pitcher, who's uh, been on this show, is a very funny comedian, had one of those moments where he was staying in a hotel and there was a guy at the desk and he went, oh, can I get, a, uh, can I get an upgrade? Can I get a bigger, bigger bed, mate? Is that all right? And a bigger, guy, bigger bed. And uh, the guy went... Uh, no, we're, we're out of beds, I'm afraid, because it's crafts. So Al goes, they're not having the big beds, are they, the bloody dogs? And got nothing. And it's just that awkward thing. Now, that deserves a giggle. But once you've committed to mm. kind of going, Duh, if you get nothing, it's just a horrible thing, because you have to then go, yeah, no single room. I yeah, debit card. always do jokes with, like, cashiers yeah. and that. And then we it sometimes went... rips it, sometimes gets nothing. It's like the time we were in Northampton, and there was that bloke who looked a bit like Pop from the League of Gentlemen. And, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it was called Pop Store. <laughs> and me and John walked in, and I went, excuse me, have you got... Uh, <laughs> You haven't got any Maverick bars, have you? <laughs> and he genuinely went, Maverick bars! And we were sat there like giggly schoolboys, but he got nothing from him. The worst one I did, me and my mum went Christmas shopping for my sister a couple of years ago, and she's into Robbie Williams, so we bought her a Robbie Williams calendar. But as, it, as she put it through the checkout, I snatched it off the checkout girl and went, that's mine! <laughs> just joking. And she just didn't get it at yeah. all. And went, okay, that's fine, love, that's fine. Well, me and uh, me and my girlfriend have started doing this as well. This is a good fun thing to do. Um, it, it's to you know when you're at the uh, the counter, you have to then insinuate that the other person's got something wrong with them. So like you're kind of like like we were in uh, like car phone warehouse the other day, and uh, and I said, yeah, you'll need that money, won't you? You drug addict. And then, you know, she gets very sort of embarrassed and the person on the counter laughs. But she got me an absolute treat the other day. We're in the supermarket and from nowhere, she accused me of being a necrophiliac. Like, really <laughs> loudly. But the rules of the game are you have to go with it. So you sort of say, yeah, yeah, love it. Absolutely love it. So start as fondue set. That's intriguing. What we could do, hey, let's keep this running. Text in 64046 um, or email russell.6music at bbc.co.uk with the times when you've tried to crack a funny... <coughs> in those awkward situations and it's gone horribly wrong. This could be fantastic. I'm sure you've got loads of instances like the ones we're describing. Also, throughout the show, we'll try and figure out this dinner party that what we, we're we calling it John Gate. It's going to be the first of many dinner parties we're going to have. Is that right? Uh, well, I'll have many dinner parties, but I'm not saying it'll be the same guests. I don't want to fall into a rot. Oh, for... Are you high? I'll have you around as a gesture because we used to live together, mate. But let's be honest, we're drifting apart. I'm going to get new people in from Swindon. I've got to make friends in Swindon. I'm not living on my own. Oh, look at you pretending to be devastated. How many times have you answered your phone when I've rang you this week? Every time. Oh, absolute piffle squat. That is unbelievable rubbish. Oh, this is tense. I'll have you around again. Good. I'll send you some toast. 
in the post. <laughs> That's what you like the most. <laughs> Um, I have an email here from Vicky Noden. Uh, Russell, don't knock uh, John for the lasagna idea. The best option for a dinner party is something that you don't need to constantly monitor so you can socialise with your guests. Have a, a glass of wine. Yeah. She says, why not go for Jamie Oliver lasagna as per the Jamie's Dinner cookbook? It has different types of meat and cheese in it and it's a bit more special than your standard lasagna. You can't lose. You want the recipe? Let me know. I'll be delighted to send it. Vicky, two kisses. Cheers, Vic. Uh, I, I, I knocked off the lasagna idea, right? Because I do like lasagna you can muck about with it do you know what i mean you don't have to use, you don't have to use beef mince you don't have to use cheese sauce do a do a mushroom cream sauce you know spicy you can do stuff with lasagna absolutely but then i thought if we're having cheese fondue for starters we're not going to want a lasagna because that's quite cheesy that's, as well oh nice uh, that's a fair point um we've had loads in about these the awkward jokes that you've tried to do um this is this is quite funny this is from rebecca pollard um she says i was in a supermarket cafe and the woman making the food burnt my sausage um <laughs> John, please. I didn't really care about it, but when she put it down, I said, it's a bit undercooked, isn't it? The people I was with laughed, but unfortunately, the manager was there and took it as a complaint. She got fired. That's oh. horrible, isn't it? Isn't that, uh, uh, that's one of those when you go, no, no, I don't, I do, I do prefer my... Uh. Well, if she did really badly burn the sausage. This is lovely. This is from Simon Gunn, uh, which is, uh, you know, he sounds like he could be one of your mates. <laughs> Lovely. That's a uh, sound effect of a gun there that John Rush has yeah. just done. Um, one Christmas, when I was home from uni, I saw my gran in a large queue at an off-license cross. That's a, that's a fantastic start to a story. Um, I walked in the pack shop, went up behind her, put my hand on her shoulder, said loudly, Are you 18, madam? She turned around. She wasn't my gran. It was a long <laughs> walk out of the shop. That's because you've gone in big there. That's a huge... That's the, kind of, that's the kind of gag that can be retold many times if it is your nan at a family. Bash, mm. but it wasn't lovely stuff. That was uh, from Simon Gunn in Twickenham. In these troubled times of uh, you know people responding and thinking they're going to get mugged, he's yeah. lucky she didn't just pivot and smack there. Yeah, to and be honest, you could have got a handbag to the face before you even get to you. Are you it? Bang down. But, she, but she's uh, she's a. Uh, a grand, so pivot and smash, I'm guessing, isn't going to happen. Oh, no, that's why they carry those big handbags. They weigh them down with stuff at the bottom, so they're like uh, hammer throwers. So they sort of spin round five or six times. So you would have it, have the assertion that all pensioners are essentially ninjas? Pretty much. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I love the idea that loads of old ladies... <gasps> The owl has landed. That weasel's onto us. Uh, hi, Russell and John. How about glazed whelks? This is back to the dinner party oh. suggestions. It's not a suggestion. It's an invitation. We can have a themed whelk party, complete with f a foam machine and the very best of wham. Consider, all right, Alex C of the blighted West Country. That was from Alexander Crawford. Lovely. I ain't going near a foam machine. I've got no time for him. No. I, I, w I went to a foam party once. It was horrible. Because I thought it was going to be like a proper, like... You know, like the kind of guns used to get that Andy Crane used to be dunked in, like the comic relief of of, uh, of old. It's rubbish. It's just some bloke with like mateys just wishing it about throwing at you. Your clothes are ruined. Clubbing, John, but you know all about it. <laughs> right, recipe ideas. Uh, uh, oh no, this is a, this is one more joke, and then let's have some music, and then we'll continue with the recipes. If you're just joining us, what we're doing, John. Uh, say hello, John. Hello, John. Oh, oh fuck, God, what's that was a really you? big break then, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Right. Say goodnight, JV. Um, goodnight, you racist. What's going on? That was a big break joke. Lovely. Um, oh, no, I see what you did. Um, uh, what we're doing is John's having a dinner party. Everyone's coming. Um, about six of us. Um, seven now. Seven. And what we're well, trying it's to... It's a big house, but it's not that big. <laughs> Someone's going to have to sit on a fold-away chair. <sighs> I'll take that. Oh, one. yeah, that weird fishing chair that you've got. No, I'll give that to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh... You... What uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to combine, and I think what we're going to do at the end of the show, we're going to ring somebody back, uh, and you're going to read out on air what John has to make, and then what we're going to do is we're going to save some of that meal, and we're going to sort of a la wheels on meals. John's going to drive round and deliver it to you. Are you all right with that? No. <laughs> um, text in 64046 or email russell.6music at bbc.co.uk with your food suggestions. But here's the uh, the last joke. This is from Ian Onions, cracking name. Dear Russell and J-Man, <laughs> what one hot summer's day I went to... Uh, uh, the picturesque Victorian pub in the shadow of Lincoln Castle for a beer. The oh. sealed knot, we in town. Huh? Recreating the siege of Lincoln during the Civil War. There were six or seven of them, male and female, in full parliamentarian costume, queuing at the bar, with their pewter tankards and one harassed barmaid. I took my place in the queue and said, Blimey, the service in here is really slow. The sealed knot people thought this feeble stab hilarious, 
but I think the barmaid could have killed me on the spot, judging by her glare. Ian Onions, Grimsby, and he's left his number. Saucy sod. Morning, everybody. Oh, hello, John. How are you? <laughs> Don't talk to me about anything other than food. Fair enough. Okay. So, what are you? Uh, what are you planning for your? Uh... They're clips for the downloads, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Are you going to tell people about those? You can tell them. Is that why we discussed that we were going to play those, no. rather than just apropos of nothing and you discussing the Jaffa cake? Oh, play them again. They're funny. Okay. Morning, everybody. That's what John says to um, to uh, his uh, his uh, teddy bears. <laughs> of a morning <laughs> when he when he, yeah, we should have one that says you've been naughty into the bag you go um but what you can do john and uh, people listening at home text the word mobile to 64046 and you can get any of those basically in me doing impressions of john that you can put on your phone so that when your phone rings it can say this morning everybody <laughs> which would be quite nice or maybe it's a text message that'd be quite lovely mm. um Basically, you follow the link to the Six Music WAP site, and you can be the proud owner of some very special audio downloads. Don't talk to me about anything other than food. That, for example. Um, uh, the, yeah. Or, or for more details about Red Nose Day, uh, go to www.bbc.co.uk forward slash Six Music. And you're wearing a red T-shirt today. I am. Is that a coincidence? No, it's not, John. Actually, yeah, it is. Um, I give loads of money to Comic Relief. Do you? Loads. Mm? Yeah. yeah, well, you earn a lot more than me, don't you? No, I don't. Oh, come, come now. <laughs> come on, you're doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm happy with myself. I'm having a great life, do you know exactly. what I mean? Went to school with Magnus Lund, who scored a try for the England rugby team, but apart from that, I think I'm coming a close second. You're, do you're doing very well. I'm very proud to be your boss. Go on, carry on. Oh, <laughs> dearie, me. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> you do this, Link. Oh, really? I'm going to enjoy some of these blueberry Jaffa cakes, which I found in a shop yesterday. Would yeah. you like another one, Adam? We got a lovely. Adam, uh, would you like another one of these Jaffa cakes? You've behaved very well today. Have another Jaffa cake. Thank you. Can I? Oh. You can go hungry, boss. You just can't get the stuff. Does your wife not do your packed lunch at your detached house in the Cotswolds before you come into the office in your jag? Well, I know. Uh, well, you know that I live at home at the minute, John. Now, this is a with Kate Thornton. <laughs> is that who I'm with this week? Yeah, she needs to pick me up. So I've been through, let's get this straight, uh, Abby Titmus. Yeah, well, that didn't work out. And then Claudia Winkleman. You weren't really in love with her. You'd just seen her in the papers. And uh, Claudia Winkleman, well, her career has taken off a bit, but Kate Thornton's had a bit of a dip, and you're a good guy. You've turned to her. You've been a shoulder to cry on. I tell you, this is lovely, right? This is kind of about Am I Normal. It's uh, an email we've had in from uh, John Farley. He says, we are expecting our first baby tomorrow, the 12th is fantastic how cool is that pretty uh, pretty lovely my wife is very anxious that the baby's born on an even date particularly not tuesday the 13th is she normal um doesn't really matter but good luck with all that that's fantastic i would avoid the 13th if you can hold out yeah okay you know, that's, just clench a bit that's john's uh, advice and he knows a lot about pregnancy so uh, mm. if, if you could just clench a bit i'm sure that'd be fine well one day the 13th is going to be a friday the 13th one yep. day he's going to have his birthday on friday the 13th and judging by the fact that the john, parents are clearly a little bit ocd the baby's yeah. going to be as well and that's going to be a stressful day for him so, so just, just hold it in or push it out either way okie dokie so it's what, five to well, uh, five to twelve on the tuesday night you think well let's just get it out now then and then it's uh, or just cheat light could you lie to a baby if the baby was really bad Born on the 13th, I bet it was like 10 past 12. Yeah, nothing to stop you just going, Yeah, well, it, it started properly, its head came out yeah, on the 12th. the 12th, so we'll say the 12th. Snag is if he's born on the 13th, chances are he'll be a werewolf, mm. so you're in trouble. So mm. the 13th comes along anyway. You're next. The point is, what I was going to do was say, This is a lovely text about you know, people are listening to our show and uh, a baby's going to be born, it's all very cool. <laughs> and you've accused it of being a werewolf, OCD. You accused monster. it of being a werewolf, no, well, it will be if it's born on the 13th, the poor thing, John. This has gone badly, I'll be honest with yeah. you. Uh, oh, but good luck w- is that? with uh, with everything and uh, yeah. Sorry, he- boss. <laughs> Can't be in charge of the show, can I, boss? Excuse me. Can he double bag? Um, <laughs> uh, oh, lovely. Yeah, you know, I got. I got we the- all know what happened to that character, don't we? Lovely reference. Don't think I didn't get that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bones. Someone stepped it in to wrap up the Muller Corner problem. Now <laughs> you've given it a name, have you? Yeah. The Muller Corner problem. Dun, yeah. dun. Let's get mullered. Until I discovered, right? Morning, that- everybody. <laughs> <laughs> If you dollop the fruit on the yoghurt and then insert your spoon underneath both, you achieve an ultimately aesthetically pleasing Muller Corner experience. We can we can put that to bed. It's Thanks, over. Laura. We've had some recipe suggestions from James in Froome. Prawn cocktail, meat, two veg, jam roly poly, job done. Oh, no. Smashing. Um, but a word of advice. Someone said, I'm thinking sweet potato and coconut curry. Yeah. Went down a storm last okay. night in the mental hospital I'm at in York. Right, I didn't read the end of that. I'll be yeah. really honest. Yeah. 
I don't so, like To be honest, that's come from a mental hospital, so it could have been anything. Mm. We ate space, did you? <laughs> Lovely. Um, John, listen to this, my friend. I this will is, do, my mate. This is Max in Hastings. Uh, please remember, John, that if you have a cheese fondue, you can only drink alcohol, no water, as it curdles in your tummy. And hey, John, I, I love you from Charlotte in London. Why don't have you, you made that up? Yeah. Why don't you? you? I don't know why you do that. You can tell when you do it because you raise your eyebrows and you sort of look slightly constipated for a fraction of a second, and then you make up part of an email. It's obvious that you've done it. That's simply not true. You don't need to massage my ego. Tell me what she really said, and then we'll have a dust down. She says, "Hey, John, stop moaning." Yeah. Why don't you try? Did she say that as well? No, no. Of course she didn't. She just said this. She goes, "Hey, John." Mm. Why don't you try cannelloni stuffed ricotta spinach, chestnut and porcini mushrooms? Porcini mushrooms. Porcini mushrooms. Porcini mushrooms, she porcini. put. It, porcini mushrooms, she put. It's light enough to I follow. I can tell you anything, can't I? <laughs> yeah. Say it. It's light enough. Or can I? It's light enough to follow fondue, but it is quite meaty. Charlotte, London. Stuffed with ricotta, chestnuts and mushrooms. Yeah, you going for that? No, probably get, eat some real food. Get out of town, Charlotte. What we're going to do, we're going to call back the winner, who, who the best person who can prepare a, a meal. And like I said earlier, text us 64046 or email at bbc.co.uk and you, you can come to the party. Or you can certainly have food delivered. To be honest, John won't let you into his house. Um, what a... Oh, Jesus. I've had a very angry uh, text here. What a pile of crap, Russell. I was born on the 13th and I'm not a werewolf. Fair enough. I'll forgive you because you're funny. Julie, two kisses. Thanks really says something about your audience when people feel the need to text that in, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you know, I think if they if they discussed something like this on Radio 4 and today's programme, people would think, I would text in just to prove that I'm not a werewolf, but they probably know that. But with the Russell Howard show, there's always that danger that you had better text in and stress that you're not actually a werewolf. Yeah. Please tell John there's nothing wrong with being born on the 13th of the month. You put this on me, I never said there was. You I did. just said if you stress about it, it's not worth it. It gives you something to look forward to when it falls on a Friday when everyone else is afraid to get out of bed. P.S. Where did he get his Jaffa cakes from? They sound delicious. I got them from a wine store on Westgate Road in Newcastle. And I took a real gamble on them because I didn't know what they were. Yeah, um, you'll take a right gamble on those, mate. But they were like blueberry Jaffa cakes, and it was white stuff on top, not chocolate. They tasted a bit like plastic, but in a nice way. Well, they'll do for me. Uh, Charlotte, there's nothing wrong with being born on the 13th. I was born on the 13th of December. I even had my 13th birthday on Friday the 13th. Wow. And that's from Keith Chegwin. <laughs> it's not, it's from Charlotte. Apparently I'm going out with Keith Chegwin. I don't know if you've heard. Oh, got it. Good morrow, chaps. You just missed a cracking country file on Wiltshire and cheese. Don't I can't help but think John would have loved other it. Than food, sorry. Damn right. I can't believe I just interrupted myself. Yeah, how cool is that? That's oh, like what a world week. we live in. Well, I hope someone Sky Plus that country file on Wiltshire and cheese, because I'd like to see that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, let's do them a deal. Uh, you can see Wiltshire and cheese if you give them the food that you're going to make. People are texting in a lot of vegetarian recipes. Fried yeah, chopped red onions. For me, it's a shame. Add diced butternut squash, cook for five minutes, add risotto. I will cook a vegetarian option for our vegetarian friend Sarah, but the main bulk of the meal will be meat. I, I, I must stress that. I'm going to turn up dressed as a chop. <laughs> right. Yeah. As opposed to a chump like last time. Oh, slam. Yeah. I walked into that, dear listeners. Yeah, you did. Continue, Curly, what more? You can't beat a hot pot for ease. And I think he means as in ease of cooking rather yeah. than something you can happily slip yeah. drugs into and get your that, guests off their rockers. That was a verse that was missing from Ebenezer Good. Yeah. Easy good, easy good. Uh 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 top with potatoes. <laughs> uh, yes, or you could do I, have a wave of baguette. Steamed salmon on a bed of saffron mash. Oh. We're learning a lot about what people think about me from the recipes that they're texting in. Saffron mash, what a waste of saffron. Um, Slam, eat that saffron. We mash, I tell you, no one does oh, this. Here here's a little flipping tip for you. Go. I'll tell you what you're going to do. You go on about, you put chives and garlic into it. You tell put hummus in it. Bit Who? of hummus mash. Hummus? Mm. And people call it hummus. Now, for me, hummus is, was, and always will be decaying plant matter used uh, on soil. Spell H U double M U S. Hummus is the Greek dip. Um, with sugar snap peas, or even for kicks, mustard mash. I like a bit of mustard mash, but that's sausage. I could do sausage and mash, couldn't I? Oh, I'm not having sausage and mash, mate. I ain't a trucker. Um, how about black pudding with scallops on a bed of salad with orange sauce? Ooh, it's lovely. 
That's good from, apart from the orange sauce. That's from Meg Shabella. What a cool There's a name. great episode of Nick Nairn's cookery show where he watches someone make black pudding and he has to go outside and be sick. Hey, what's all this about? I've just got a, uh, an email from uh, from Danny in Bexhill that says, Hey guys, got a nice picture of Russell scratching his ass on the webcam. What's all that about? Does anyone uh, elaborate? Not so you God, must they see- must have really caught you off guard there. Yeah, <laughs> because I was pretty sure I was busy uh, dealing with my files. Yeah, that could have been any one Where of several webcams? shots. So it could have been that one. Yeah. It's just... Uh, Right, hey John, how about braised lamb shanks with baby onions and mash? Easy and tasty. H, three kisses. Yeah, I like a bit of braised lamb, but I don't think I have a pot big enough for a six shanks. Do a goat's cheese salad for starter, mussels and chips for main, followed by chocolate roulade. It sounds tricky, but it's easy. Roulades are overrated. Uh, I like the idea of mussels and chips, but again, I'm going to have to buy a lot of mussels to feed six. How about, John, why don't you just order a takeaway? Less fuss and everyone's happy. Andre from Birmingham. Yeah, but everyone won't be happy. You won't. You'll go, oh, he come round here, all he gets his takeaway. If all you gets takeaways at home, don't I? Don't you come round Swindon Week for oh, it? it'd just be pleasant to see you. <laughs> I wish that were true. Oh, why'd you start this? I love you the bitch, you know I do. Um, seven people now, that's a lot, isn't it? I'm starting to get stressed. I'm oh. genuinely on edge. I've been on edge for a week now about this. You've been on edge for 24 years. The problem with all these things is I really have set myself up for a fall. Like, with all this food stuff, people think I'm a cordon bleu chef, and I'm not. And all the grammar stuff that I started just as a little bit of... Supposed to be just me whinging. And now, like, people have posted really nice things on MySpace. Very nice, thank you. Yeah. And people put, oh, I don't want to write anything in case you have a go at me for grammar. And now people think I'm a moody old sod who just complains about grammar. I'm not really that bothered. I just think if you have the choice between doing it right or wrong, let's try and do it right, guys. <coughs> You've just received an email and laughed. No, I was laughing at you, saying, right. let's just do it right, guys. Right. You sounded like Mark Lawrenson. Hey, it's nearly your belt. Nothing it. wrong with that. There isn't. We've had a, we've had another. We'll do grammar in a minute because we've had a lot of those in. A lot of people, uh, Rachel, Liam, and Garland, all picking up on the fact that the Independent are running a, a free book section on how to improve your grammar. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. So proper can. Although good guys at the Independent know a lot about comedy reviews. Oh uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Completely unbiased opinion there, yeah, I would have just, thought just, from uh, factually flawless Russell Howard. Yeah, the yeah Independent. Just, they're just good guys. They're what good did guys. they say about you? Oh. Yeah. Go on. No. As not, if I'm, you don't know. Well, of course I know. I'm not going to read out my <laughs> quote. Oh, my God. Um, my I'll old what man. they did say about you and the Scotsman. Let's hear it for carbohydrate. Yeah. Bang. <laughs> you don't get that said about every comic. But not every comic wastes an audience time by talking about sandwiches as much as I do. But not every comic is as charming as you are talking about sandwiches. Yeah, well, you have to be charming because otherwise people get offended. Whereas if what, about sandwiches? There's a lot to be said I for I would put charming. it to you. you would, you'd really struggle to offend someone with a sandwich-based riff. I whooped this week because I was laying it down about cutlery and the audience weren't ready for it. <laughs> so I did a little whoop, and Excellent. I said, yeah, I'm laying it down. Sweet. <laughs> may have been inappropriate. Uh, Paul has texted in uh, a, a joke that backfired. Yeah. His old man was on a ferry going to Ireland, and his old man's a chef, right? But he still ordered the cooked breakfast on the ferry, and Paul says it's his own fault, really. Yeah. But it was a terrible one. As he was sitting down and eating it, a children's entertainer walked past dressed as a clown, and his dad said to him, excuse me, are you the man who cooked this breakfast? Right, which I think is quite a good joke, pretty quick, that. But the clown bent down in front of him and squirted water from a flower into his face, and it got a mixed response from everyone, and then they had a fight. Wow. And uh, he threatened to throw (laughs) the clown overboard, which which upset some young kids sat nearby. That would be a phenomenal... My dad is great, isn't it? How do moments like that occur in the world? You just sat there eating your dinner, a clown, a clown wanders past, you have a pop, before you know it, you're having a fight with a clown. A minute yeah. ago, you're eating an egg. We had a really nice email a minute ago that somebody was listening to the show and they had their window open and the sun was... What, what are you looking Sounds at? weird. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah what sounds weird? You sound weird. Oh, really? You sound like you're in a box, like my teddy bears. Okay. How's that? Is that better? That's slightly better. Okay. I don't know if the people at home are experiencing any difficulties, but... Uh, uh, I've been filling with my mic, and uh, now it feels slightly... Let's just continue as if it isn't happening. Oh, this is lovely radio. Oh, is that better? Oh, yeah, there we go. Lovely. You cool. managed to spin your mic round backwards. I was just reading some uh, text, and yeah, I did. Um, we've, ha- <coughs> we've had this. How, How did you do that? I don't know. What? What are you on about? Oh, yeah, I've got it the wrong way. Flipping it. Um, you can have a bed of mash stained with Marmite. Yeah. 
Layer of crisp, streaky bacon. Another layer of the mash topped with melted cheese. Tim and Cheltenham. That sounds like proper student fodder, that. Mm. Um, I really do love you, John, much more than Russell. Thanks very much. How about... <laughs> we get loads of those, it's fine. How about stuffing peppers with mint meat cooked with pine nuts and mushrooms and served with wasabi mash? Definitely out of my demographic, that, let's be honest. That sounds quite nice. I like the idea of stuffed stuff and stuff that you can bake. This is a good angle. One of the most disgusting things I... When I was really young, I was really into food, I was just rubbish at it. And I saw a programme where someone just hollowed out a beef tomato and cracked an egg in it yeah, and baked really? it. Really? And I, I cooked it. It was absolutely rancid. It was one of the most horrible... The egg wasn't properly cooked. The tomato was... It was just like having a tomato and an egg, but neither really... No, oh, it was that, horrible. Right? But really surely that combination, horrible. but what's, what could that, what would that do with that, like poach the egg inside the, the egg tomato? The egg was supposed to bake inside the tomato, and I Jesus. think as the tomato cooks it kind of steams, so the egg's not too... <laughs> oh, it was a really, really bad idea. How about this, right? Uh, Bex in Peterborough says, I'm doing seared... So she's doing her own rival dinner party. Oh, like, really? I'm doing seared tuna steaks on wilted spinach with a chilli soy dressing followed by a rhubarb crumble. Um, and uh, also from the uh, the girl from the mental hospital again, we're all a bit psychotic, uh, but we're knocking up a mean vegetable crumble tonight. No sharp knives, obviously. I don't know whether she's actually in a mental or in which case, I've been in one of them. They ain't much fun, I'll tell you. Working in the kitchens, you'll assume. Vegetable yeah. crumble. Not into that. I'll be all right, be fun. Like as a main course, a crumble. Okay. Bread crumbs and stuff. Someone says, uh, someone's uh, boasting that they last Christmas cooked for 13 roast chicken and a vegetarian choice and goes to the extent of saying it would even impress Raoul. That's ah, from Stephen Holgreen. Ah, nice. uh, how about go and beef stew? You shove it all in a pot and leave it in the oven for two hours. Very tasty, very easy, and everyone's happy. Sweet. All sounds good. That's the kind of stuff we're going for. So, grammar then? Yeah, let's do a bit of grammar. Text sure. in 64046, or email russell.6music at bbc.co.uk with all the things that have wound you up, all things grammatical. I see, I'm kind of coming round to your viewpoint yeah. now because it's becoming a little bit... Um, it's becoming very sort of Daily Telegraph, Middle England. Is that the problem with The Independent doing a section on grammar is that you know, without being too judgmental, most people who read The Independent probably can speak and write quite well. As you say that, my my uh, uncle's mate, Critchell, uh, who's a lovely bloke, who I wouldn't have had him down as an independent reader, he loves it, and he ain't so hot in the old reading and writing. Right, well, you know, maybe it's well, but I can't ever think that would it's be... Just, it's just very middle England isn't it? It's very sort of snobbish, and people complaining about things they've seen that are wrong, and it's just... Let's hear it, here we go. Well, oh, there's a cracker in the Times this week. The Times make a lot of spelling mistakes for, a, for, a, for a well-rated newspaper. They had a whole, that massive headline, uh, Secret Dairy of Alistair Campbell to be published this week. Really? Mm. As if Alistair Campbell's been secretly milking cows Maybe and it's that all going to come out this Is week. That, that's why he had to quit as a spin doctor. Yeah. Um, and I had a request. Parliament. Go on. I had a, see, people see me now and they request me to whinge about stuff. Yeah. But I, I was told to uh, discuss uninterested and disinterested. Do you right. know what the difference is? I don't know. Uh, one means not interested and one means not biased. Ah. You see. Uh, uninterested. <laughs> I said I would deliberately get it wrong to wind people up. But uninterested means not interested. And disinterested means not biased. But right. people say I was disinterested in something. Right. It means they don't have a vested interest. But uh, see, graf- I just find that kind of quibbling. Do you know what I mean? It's just that thing of, But that's right and wrong, uh, isn't it? Yeah, but, it, you know, if, ultimately, does it really need to be picked up? It doesn't matter. You kind of get the gist of what someone's saying and you can move on with the point of the story. Not, well, I'm actually going to... It's just picking up the... The Lexis and the linguistic flaws within chat rather than enjoying what people are Ah, but are it saying. happens in literature, you see. We were discussing uh, disinterested love. Oh, right. Um, you see, you can have disinterested love where you, you could argue that you don't really love someone, you just have a vested interest in loving someone. Right. And it's very different to uninterested love. Yeah, I'll give you that. Well, fair enough. So, 1-0. Great. <laughs> um, Rachel's emailed one in about uh, correction of uh, some grammar in some ladies' toilets in Marks and Spencer's in York. Go some... on. <laughs> You'll like where this starts. Someone had written on the wall, you smell of poo. She did. Yeah. Um, but they'd spell of, O-double-F. So, underneath, someone had written, it's of, not off. And then someone else had written that in, it's of, not of... They hadn't put an apostrophe. So there's now three lines of gradually corrected graffiti in a toilet in York. See, maybe I'm being sexist, but I've, I wouldn't have thought there would have been sort of such fecal-based graffiti in ladies' toilets. I like the idea that it's all very kind of like... They're like little sort of gnomes and that, kind of dancing around and sort of doilies everywhere. And if there are things written on the wall, it's just Jennifer's OK by me and things that are quite nice. Not, you smell of poo. Surely if she smells of poo, just tell her. And then she can wash the poo off and you move on. <laughs> 
Am I wrong? I'm putting out all the fires. Uh, it's interesting though, women's graffiti. Yeah, I kind of don't imagine there would be any yeah. graffiti in women's toilets. Uh, but I, I don't understand why you would be. I certainly didn't think there'd be gnomes there though. That's that's, that's pretty much you're on your own there, mate. No, but do you know what I mean? That there's there's a, a magical fantasy land that you imagine. Like it's like the girls' toilet when you're little. You sort of like you you never go in there, and then when you go in there, correct? But, yeah, yeah. But you imagine it's fantastic in there. Mm. But you know, and then you occasionally sort of listen in to the girls. It's not too loud. You can't listen to them. Go wee. on, Russell. Go on. You can't listen to them. Wee. It sounds like an angry kettle. But uh, it does hideous noise. Oh. But you, d don't you imagine that it's exciting? There's fun stuff going on in the ladies' toilets. Whereas in the boys, there's nothing really. I have fights. a pretty good idea of what goes on in ladies' toilets. I'm not that naive, but I just don't imagine that what goes on is people scribbling on walls. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? But it's sexist that I, I kind of assume women are cleverer than men. Yeah. Well, I wish I didn't. Because they aren't. <laughs> Eat that. But yeah, I can't imagine a woman graffitiing a toilet. Yeah. But then they probably they must do. They yeah. must just get bored. And they've got lipstick as well, which is perfect. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, it's causing no irreparable damage, and you've got it with you, you might as well do doodle. If I wore lipstick, I'd write everywhere. Um, someone's complained about uh, the word... Now, I, I, I confess I didn't know this wasn't right. Tit bits. Yeah. It's not tit bits, it's tidbits. T I D B I T S. Right. I didn't know that. I've been saying tit bits for years. Uh, yes. But they get very angry about this. It. It's an Americanization. When training your dog, give him tit bits as a reward. That's an American thing. Or not, because your dog can get very fat. Well, they say sometimes, you know, sometimes a bit of tit is very nice. This is probably why yeah. page three is so popular, but I don't feed it to my dog. Yeah, yeah exactly. You don't want to give your dog offcuts of breast. Well, you know. Tit bits. Where does that come from then? I don't know where Tidbits comes from. Mm, if you know, text in. Absolutely, 64046. There's a story in the paper this week about love. Do you want to discuss that? Yes. You're into all that expressions of love rubbish, aren't I, you? I am. You I believe am. in love and happiness and all that. Did you ever believe in love at first sight as a kid? Uh, yeah. Because I used to, I remember for about eight to ten, I used to wander around with very, kind of like, my eyes constantly, never blinking for fear that I'd miss her. And then I stopped because I thought, she'd have to be into goggly-eyed boys, so I'll give it a yeah. <laughs> And if you blinked and you missed her, she'd have to be really fast. But that's the fear, isn't it? It's that thing of, like, I remember being in, sort of in, in Florida on holiday when I was 16 as well, and, like, looking at every girl, just in case you think, well, I'm not going to be here again. So, you know, so I mm. live in a little village in Hampshire. I need to find her. If I'm finding her, I'll find her here. I didn't find her. God, but, if it had been Mickey Mouse or something. Yeah, that would have been awkward. It's really horrible, yeah. Right? We, I met this, uh, this girl when I was on holiday when I was 16, right? It was sort of quite sort of quite pretty and we're chatting and stuff but i had a big fear that you know i'm not going to wee in the sea because sharks will come near um so we were down by the beach and my mum was nearby and i went oh, i gotta go back to the hotel i gotta leg it back so i needed a wee and i sort of ran back and my mum i didn't know this but my mum went away yeah he's afraid to uh, wee in the sea he normally does in england but not here because probably the sharks will get him and i found that out when i went back so that was nice so what's this story about love then well there's a couple right they're both about fairly pointless gestures, right? In Rome now, there's a real trend. I don't know how you express your love. We argued the other week about people texting the word love, L-U-V. Yes. I don't, I don't understand the pointless. You, you either say love and you mean love or don't bother, right? Yep. There's a new trend in Italy where couples go to this street lamp by the River Tiber yep. and they lock a padlock to it yep. and then they throw the key in the river. Right. And it's supposed to be a gesture of... I don't know whether it's a circle of undying love. Right. But there's loads of these padlocks now on this street lamp. So that I'm sure the first person that did it probably was ad-libbing. You know, they just yeah. bought a padlock yeah. and they thought, I love you so much, I don't even want this padlock anymore. I'm going to lock it to a lamppost, yeah. right? And probably, had there just been one, that's probably a violation, yeah. littering. But now there's loads of them. So not only is it a fairly pointless gesture... It's an unoriginal pointless gesture. You, if you go there now and there are 400 of these padlocks on the lamppost and you put the 401st one down, you wouldn't bother, would you? You'd just go, I don't really understand what this means. In Italian, obviously. Yeah. I don't understand what this means, so yeah. I'm not going to bother. Yeah. And then just not bother. And uh, I suppose the idea is that the person walks past every day on their way to work and looks at that padlock and thinks, oh what has happened with my life but maybe that's what maybe that happens in britain like all those d locks that you see just lying around <laughs> and you think someone's had their bike nicked maybe it's you know d for devotion maybe it's love but see what if you've got like a combination code mm. on the uh, that'd be awkward wouldn't it if there's a combination code on the uh, the padlock and you're very much in love with your wife and then some wretched little kid wanders past and just goes eight seven two 
gets the combination and suddenly you and your wife drift apart like two toddlers on lilos. Yeah. That'd be awkward. That would be slightly tense. I Probably don't use a combination lock. That's quite a cynical way of saying, I think it's quite an expensive lock, that, and I don't think we're going to last. Yeah, so exactly. I thought, I'll get a padlock one and i just change the code for yeah. the next girl. Exactly. I absolutely love you. To prove it, here we go. Click. 69, 69. What up? Let's yeah. go get some Miss Millies or something. Um, what would you do, though, if you were in love with somebody? What kind Chain of- myself to him and jump in the river and that- see if we survive. That's one way of looking at it. Yeah, if you survive, it's fate and you love each other. Yeah. But if you both just look at each other and go, oh, might as well just chill out at the bottom. Why are you wearing moon boots? It's you and me, darling. It's you and me. Um, that's lovely. Well, it's it's nearly it's nearly time for the news. What was the other sort of? There was uh, the guy who uh, proposed to his wife by uh, she went to this local cine world yes. and he'd done a little short film of him oh, exposing I saw that. cards. Yeah, that was on this morning, wasn't it's it? Really, I don't know why there must be more romantic proposals that have been done this week than cine world. I don't know where they live, like Stoke. If you've just gone to see 23 with Jim Carrey and your boyfriend's done this, I just, you know, it's it's nice for an individual. When you read about it, you just go, ah, it's... Oh, it'd be lovely, though. If you were sat there in the cinema and uh, your your uh, sort of boyfriend had a big sign that went, I love you, I think you're amazing, would you marry me? You'd just be sat there going, it'd be all you do not to go, yeah, yes! How awkward would it be if it was the wrong film? I take the cinema that. very seriously, though. Five cinema to that... see a film. I just, don't waste my time. I'll I'll say yes after the film, but for now... My popcorn's getting warm. No, you wouldn't. You'd say yes, you'd throw your popcorn everywhere. Now, we were talking about the graffiti in ladies' uh, toilets, um, and uh, we had one from Kirsten. We had a, uh, an email from Kirsten Foster. It's really great. It, her, she says her email address, and then it says, on behalf of Kirsten Foster, at a different address. Nice. She, um, she says, I did an essay on graffiti in men versus women's toilets for a sociolinguistic course at university. The men's toilet were full of political scree... The women's full of saucy lesbo come-ons. Mind you, this was at Birmingham Uni, library toilets, so a bit of a skewered data set. You can really study anything now, can't you? (laughs) It's amazing, though, isn't it? If you want to spend your time going in and out of toilets, there's a degree for you. Yeah. There's an amazing a Bristol George University. Michael, George Michael should have said that one. If you if you say what am I d- I'm doing a, t- a social linguistic course, actually, Bristol University Arts and uh, Arts and Sciences Library second floor toilet gentlemen's lavatory. There is the most incredibly detailed and graphic sexual scene, carved with a compass into the back of the toilet roll holder. I have. Ever it's what it's, happens? What? It's, it's, I'm it's not, not like, going to what's happening, but the detail. Oh, come on, slightly. Is it like one of your videos? It's nothing like <laughs> a video that I was given by a friend <laughs> that I hid under. So your where head. is that? That's put on a on a toilet roll holder. Yeah, it's scratched in with a compass. But I mean, it's taken. Who that's does taken that? hours. Yeah, yeah that but... has taken out, and it's one of those things that usually the thing about graffiti is it gets graffitied because people it was graffiti. Nobody's touched it. If anything. All that's going to happen to that is it will get framed. I assume it's still there. They might have replaced it. What we should do, right, we should go there and we should add, like, sort of compass scratched image of you and me. Imagine that. You and me added. Could Is there room for us? Uh, in the world? <laughs> no, in that little, in the, you know. No, no, it's pretty big. F- it's pretty big. So what is it? I need to know now. What- well, I'll tell you... Off air. Okay, well, use. But while we're talking about love and romance, sweet. I took that, that was about romance before. This is a horrible story, right? A man got <laughs> set it up. A man got caught. Well, it, it appeals to me because it's about divorce and unhappiness. Right. Uh, a man got caught drinking and driving. Right. And he was let off because what had happened? His ex-wife had been spiking his drinks out of spite. So he'd gone round for their 12-year-old birthday party. Yeah. And he'd had a can of beer, right? And you should question why you're drinking at a 12-year-old's birthday party anyway. It's probably not that kind of vibe, yeah. right? But what she was doing is using a cake bag ice, a cake icing bag yeah. to squeeze vodka into his beers. Lovely. Right? And then she gave him the kids and said, I'll go for a drive with the kids. And the minute he left, phoned the police. And then, right, she said the reason she did it is because she's lost custody of the kids. Now, you'd have to say, how surprised are you to lose custody of your kids if you're happy to ply their dad with drink and then send them off for a drive with him? I can't understand why they've called me an unfit mother. Well, probably because of everything you do to them. And hang on a minute, so is... So she's one that he, he's got in trouble for He this. got off the drink driving thing. Oh, thank thing. God for Although, that, to yeah. be fair, he said, he said, I couldn't believe it when I failed the dr- test. I'd only had two beers. Well, let's be honest, two beers is probably still too much if you've got your three children in the back. Jeez, that's if amazing, you're driving your kids, just don't have anything. That is amazing. I like a drink, but there are some times I won't drink. And that's generally before I drive. Hang on a minute. If you had a kid, you would, uh, you'd not drink it on the head. 
No, I never said that. <laughs> I never said that. If anything, that would double my intake. We've done a similar thing, though. Can you remember when we did that thing for MTV and I popped some gin in the arrival? Oh, yeah. Well, that was really stupid of Yeah, he got really cross. We did, we did a, a pilot for a show, right? And we were filming it at, like, nine in the morning. Yeah, yeah. And he decides to slip a little bit of gin inside my orange juice. You needed loosening up. Yeah, I really needed loosening up. <laughs> so you got me... And I had to drive to a gig that night. I needed to uh, put some gin in that. And so, I, there's a clip of V where I went, oh, this tastes a bit weird. And I never realised until afterwards that you'd been pouring drink into I it. I ginned it up. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what we're going to do. It's a bit of a first on the show. Um, we are going to figure out, because um, basically we've been chatting about the dinner party, as people are called, heat are calling it now. Um, and what we thought we, we've You're got... not bringing her, are you? Oh, John. We, <laughs> who could her be? Well, it's Kate, it's Kate, isn't it? Kate Thornton. Yeah. Or who I'm going out Oh, with. you're bringing Abby now as well, because that's going to get weird. You can't bring both of them. I'm not bringing either of them. Um, what what we've been doing, we've been chatting about a uh, dinner party and what uh, John's going to cook for us all for the Lucky Seven, and we've got two people that we're going to ring up. We're going to do it after this song, and basically we're gonna, we, we've whittled it down to two, and then we're going to figure out who the best is by chatting to them, and mm. they can tell us about our recipes. It's going to be fun. So it's a bit of a first here. Uh, John's having the dinner party, aren't you, mate? I'm having the dinner party. And uh, we've whittled it down to two choices um, for, for the meal, and uh, we've got the, uh, the two ladies, uh, Julia and Lizzie, who are on the lines. I think we can go to them now. Hello. 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 Uh, so you've got very similar wow. voices. This is awkward. Um, uh, <laughs> say hello, Ladies Julia. Ladies' voices. Yeah. Julia? Hello, Russell. That's John. Ha- hello. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, and hello, Lizzie. Hello. You, you suppose sound, can one of you put like a really deep voice? <laughs> is that all right? So we can figure out who's going to go deep. Or you can go high. Lizzie, you go deep a minute. Hello. Oh, that, oh Jesus. That was quite nice, wasn't it? <laughs> um, Julia, can you go high? Well, you did. That was good. Right, so let's keep it going. Right, so Lizzie, take us through your dish. What, the chorizo? Yeah, damn right. Keep it okay, going. Okay, it's chorizo, mm. chicken and chickpeas. Yep. And you basically, you get your garlic, fry that off with the onion. Right. Take that out. I've taken it out. And then you put in your chorizo, really good quality chorizo. Damn yeah, right, you do. Off, take that out. And yep. then fry your chicken off. Yep. Take that out and then bring it all back in. Yep. Chuck in some parsley, chuck in some chickpeas, chuck in some chicken stock and some paprika and then just leave it in the oven for about two hours and it's sumptuous. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so your juices is just chicken stock and, and, and that's it? Homemade chicken stock. Homemade yeah. chicken stock. I ain't got time for that, do you know what I mean? John, stop it. Just let can, her talk. Can I sure. use... You can you've use, you've I really turned use Russell here. You can use shop. Right, I will do that. Um, Wicked. Now, what what cut of chicken are we using? I'm going to have to take over the speech because Russell is just wincing because oh. you said take your chorizo out and he's really misinterpreted that. It was lovely. <laughs> that was great. Glance at the webcam for a shot of Russell's spicy sausage. It is. It's lush. It's absolutely delicious. Right. Well, that's that does sound. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of the chickpea. Oh, we'll put um, butter beans in there. Well, I was going to suggest the butter bean. I'm glad you've said that. As John, I'm doing today. How, oh, nice. How has her voice n- not worked on you? <laughs> I'm immune to it because I know that eventually it will be ended by so well uh, don't call me because I won't call you so I'm just used to that that's what I hear when any woman talks now but even if she says it like that don't call me I'll call you you're like, oh it doesn't matter just leave some messages on my phone and I'll play them when you're out yeah I'm anyway. into the proclaimers <laughs> so you know that is going to keep it going um, so uh, let's have the other recipe that's uh, also that very good nice. though very good indeed Hello. Um, well, I'll go for a beef bourguignon. Mm-hmm. And, well, first off, you want to get your kind of some, uh, lardons as, uh... Lardons is a great bacon. word. You're already a point up there. <laughs> hey, and, uh, so you've got your tricky bacon and your shallots and yeah. the garlic. Yeah. Frying them off, uh, then, uh, do your beef. Basically, you want, a, an, a, a nice cut of beef, some nice braising beef or something like nice. that. Nice, yeah. And, uh... Brown those off so you're getting all the nice juices from the meat browning. Mm-hmm. Um, put them all in and then bring about two bottles of burgundy in. Yeah. Bit of Bailey's. You're winning, John Rapp. Bit of Bailey's as well. Just clog it in. And, just nip uh, down threshers. Just leave that simmer for a couple of hours. Chop up some mushrooms, put them in with like half an hour to go. And then it's done. In the meantime, you can be doing your potatoes bourgeois. Oh, see, that's quite intriguing. See, she's, she's got that going and she's got other things yeah. cooking away. The Did same you really time. say put Bailey's in it? She did. You said a put bay leaf, not yeah. a bay, bay leaf. Yeah, bay leaf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was going to say. Be insane. I've, yeah, that would be mental. Who'd do that? Cat, you could almost Cat's picture that though. Quite, you know, it'd be quite sweet and creamy and. It curdle with the wine. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, eat that, John. Keep that. <laughs> well done, well done. He's a fool to himself. Right, um, it's it's voting time, so we'll leave it up to the uh, to the nation. Text right. us 64046 or email russell.6music. Who wins? Is it Julia or is it Lizzie? What are we going to go for? We're essentially, it's beef versus chicken chorizo, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I That I, was cracking, though. It was, it's fantastic. If I'm honest, they were both wonderful dishes. I feel a bit like I'm judging dinner ladies. Um, I, f- I feel really powerful. <laughs> no offence, girls. Yeah, no, 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 that's a yeah. good thing. Ladies, hold up your ladles. Um, but I would probably go for the uh, the chicken chorizo in that it sounded sexier which is a simplistic <laughs> way of looking at it john what are you going to go for um i need some time to think about it because oh, I've, I've got to you widen can... it out for seven right you know i assume both these dishes can be done for many people yeah and i've done this for like 13 and it's... i've done mine for 15 <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh you get two like ladies a... together and yeah. it always turns into a cat fight exactly <laughs> it's like uh, it's like a graffiti on a toilet wall we've just heard from adam hudson he's just he's just wrote here you need to decide now as we're ending it's the last record god this is tense isn't it there's four of us in the studio what are we go adam Deneen, you're coming to the meal what do you want chicken chorizo or beef one's done it for 15 the other one's done 13 <laughs> dishes Dishes. Chorizo. chorizo. chorizo and you're nice. going chorizo. I'm going chorizo. Can Ooh. we start saying chorizo as well, yeah. given that that's the correct pronunciation? If you like, yeah. Oh, like an arsehole. Uh, Adam? If I was there, definitely chorizo. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. that's 3 0. What are you going for, John? I'm going to go for beef because chicken's already won and I don't want beef to not get any votes. <laughs> Lovely stuff. <laughs> so they go, it's 3 1. Um, I'll tell you what. Chicken's we... obviously a lot cheaper and everything. Oh, so. <laughs> that is a slam. <laughs> really? She, she's like that, yeah, chicken's cheaper. She's done it for 15, whatever. Um, well, uh, I'll tell you what, if, if, if you like, we'll do chicken this week. We'll do beef the we'll week We'll do after. the chicken, Russell, but you can have a packet of beef and onion crisps. Okay, that sounds, that? Lo- that sounds lovely. Lovely. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much, both Julia and Lizzie. Um, we'll do this every week. We should, um, we should have them ringing in. Uh, it was Lizzie, wasn't it, with the sexy voice? That's me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> can, you, can you introduce the next song? It'll be lovely. It's Sign of the Times by Prince. Do it as if you're... Bernard Manning. No. Don't do it as if you're Bernard Manning. That'd be horrible. Do it as if you're riding on a unicorn, right? Okay. Yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's Sign of the Times by Prince. Lovely stuff. This is the Thanks final tune. Much. Thanks very much for, uh, for letting us speak to you. It's been lovely. I hope you've enjoyed the show. John, have you enjoyed it? I've had a cracker, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> See you later. Ta-ra. Bye. 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 This is Six Music.